also with us for this chat is John Leach, the only non-Labour councillor on Manchester City Council and former Liberal Democrat MP for Withington. I'll start with you, John. Carl Cashman there calling for a regional body to represent the North West in Brussels. The feeling is that the Liberal Democrats are not accepting that we're leaving the EU because we are. Well, I think we do accept that we will be leaving the EU, uh, but we're very keen to ensure that we don't go for a hard Brexit and that we have a good relationship with Europe after we've left the European Union. Because as it stands at the moment, in, the, in Manchester and the North West in general, uh, most of our trade is with uh, the European and Union. And your thoughts on the white paper then, does that represent a hard Brexit, harder than you would have liked? Uh, well, I think all, all the noises coming out from Theresa May are for a hard Brexit, and that's not what people voted for in the referendum. Is she entitled to have devised the white paper that she has, Jake? Is it too hard? Absolutely. Well, I think from the Lib Dems' point of view, a sort of bright pink blancmange-like uh, substance would be too hard a Brexit. But ultimately, people voted for global Britain. They voted for a Britain that faces the world. And actually, there could be no better city to look to than Liverpool and its history of its being the gateway to America to see actually what a new Britain will look like. It should be uh, a globally facing Britain, one which um, looks to our Commonwealth as trading partners, looks to the United States as trading partners, but as I said earlier, still supports a strong European Union. And I think the White Paper set out very well a way in which we can achieve that. And lots of things in there, like, for example, leaving the customs union, which people have been critical of, are absolutely vital to ensure that Britain is free to make her own trade deals with the rest the of the world. But Ken Clark wasn't the only one to describe the White Paper as Wonderland. Several MPs across Europe said it's just totally unrealistic. So she's pitching for a deal that will not be sealed across Europe. I don't think anyone thinks that every single desire set out in the White Paper will be achieved by the government. Mm. It is saying the deal we are aiming for, what we need is a deal which has the majority yeah. of what Britain wants and needs so we can go on to succeed. But there will have to be some give and take. Europe will have to uh, get some benefit as well from Britain. There is a concern, Jonathan, that at the moment the opposition are not in a position to adequately scrutinise and stand up to the government because there's such disunity. No, but that's the job of Parliament as a whole, by the way, as well. I mean, what Theresa May has promised us in the White Paper is everything that's good about the European Union and none of the burdens in terms mm. of paying anything in and indeed more from around the world. Now, what the, what the White Paper doesn't really tell us is how you go about delivering that. I mean, how can you have no... Uh, frictionless of trade with the rest of Europe still and have no tariffs with, with other parts of the world. That's true. Parts we... of it are directly contradictory, Jake, aren't they? Um, well, you know, there are lots of countries which are in a customs union or free trade freely with Europe who also trade freely with the rest of the world. Turkey does, for example. So I think there are precedents out there. But we are not looking for a deal which any other country has. The Prime Minister has been absolutely clear that in a country that works for everyone, we have to have a British deal uh, with Europe. But I think absolutely we should be looking at doing free trade deals with the United States. We've gone from the back of the queue under President Obama mm -hmm. to the front of the queue under President Trump. Australia, New Zealand, Canada, all sort of natural allies of Britain. We share lots of things, including the same head of state. Well, that's, that's um, to we should be looking to do trade out, deals though, with on, on The political question is, though, it's not whether these countries we can do deals with. Of course we can. Of course we should try and do Well, that. we can't yet. It's, We've got to wait a few well, years before we it's, can. It's a political question for the House of Commons and the House of Lords to an extent as to what we'll do. What the Americans will ask for, number one, is they don't want, they don't like the ban across the EU on hormone-treated beef. So that's going to be their number one request. Now, do our constituents want growth hormone treated beef? Well, mm. probably not, mm. actually. So, you know, we can say, yes, these are these countries, we can do deals with them. We'll still have to make political choices. And that it's unclear, really, what the government will do on and this. And, John, choices. was it disappointing from your perspective that two senior Lib Dem MPs abstained from the vote? The Lib Dems are now seen as the main party when it comes to opposing leaving the European Union. Two of them didn't turn up to vote. Um, there were two MPs that abstained, but all, the whole party is united behind ensuring that people get a final vote um, on the final deal that is brought is is brought forward by uh, Theresa May, uh, we're also very very clear that um, people living in living in the EU, British citizens should be allowed to stay, and mm. EU citizens sh uh, living in Britain should be able to stay. 
uh, and and we're wholly united on that. And the amendments that are being put forward um, as part as the bill goes forward, I suspect, will get full support from all Liberal Democrats in Parliament. There is an argument that this doesn't come from the heart when it comes to the Liberal Democrats. It's just a way of setting your stall out, being a bit different, and gaining votes, as happened in Richmond. I, I, I think that that's a bit of spin from the other political parties. Actually, we've always been the pro-European party. We've always been the ones committed uh, to being part of Europe and trading freely with Europe and making sure that um, we can be all all part of Europe. And Jake, why, why, why not? Why not put the final deal to the public? How can you have a negotiation where, where you're having a second referendum at the end of it? Because there's no incentive for Europe to negotiate with oh. us if we might turn around and say actually we're staying. So I just yeah, I can see where that mm. desire comes from, but, but how can that actually work? I, can't I, I think, I think Jonathan over... makes a very good point there. And what I'd go and say, of course, the final deal will be put to the House of Commons. And I pick up on what Jonathan says. We're actually, regardless of what political party you're in, almost regardless of the win, this is the biggest decision facing Britain mm. for a generation, probably that we will ever know, certainly in my lifetime. So every member of Parliament, whichever party they're from, has to play an active role in scrutinising both the deal and the legislation that we're currently passing. And in truth, at the end of it, we will all have a vote on whether it is a good or bad deal for Britain. And I hope and believe that we will get the best deal for Britain. But, how, but you are beginning to see... can it not be an absolute nightmare when this, especially for the Labour Party, this was essentially a binary choice this week, do we say yes or no to Article 50? It's going to get really complicated when it comes to customs agreements, when it comes to immigration, when it comes to EU migrants staying here. How can you be an effective opposition? Well, because we have people from both sides who are Labour voters who are on both sides of the referendum. And actually, if you look at what this country needs, and mm -hmm. I see this in my mailbag every week, it has to start coming together. It's actually, I think, got more divided since the referendum, some very bitter opinions being expressed. You know, at least Labour can represent both sides of that debate, and, and that is what it needs. We, we can't have a sort of culture war between Remainers and Leavers. We've got to start thinking about the future. And in terms of what that future is, I think it's got to be an open global relationship, mm -hmm. absolutely. That's not what everyone who voted leave, if we're being honest, really wanted uh, to get. Well, so we, we have to address that. Why, why are Labour and the Tories so scared of giving people a vote on the final deal? Why, why, it doesn't work, it, John. How, yeah. how can well, you have a negotiation no, no, of course, where, where, of course where you're saying well, to have well, a referendum? Don't, don't give us when, what we're asking when, for when and we we'll had, stay. When I mean, we had the referendum, people voted either to remain or to leave for all different reasons. When we actually get a deal on the table, we should have the trust in the people that they should then get a final say. But are you saying on, if they reject on whether it, John, or not they actually we stay in the European want... Union? Abs that, that absolutely. Is, but that, that is a absolutely. con on the referendum. Yeah, that, 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 that is that We're going to have to leave it there, fellas. We're going to have to leave it. John, many thanks for joining us. Thank you, John. Now, next.